Welcome to this week's episode of Investigation Exodus. I'm your host, Sandy Rhodes. In the spirit of other intrepid explorers you may like to watch on TV, we're digging deeper into the story of the Exodus. We're taking you back in time to see what really happened. I invite you to travel with me once again to ancient Egypt to talk with those involved. We continue our investigation by hearing the next part of the story from our storyteller, Turner Page. Over to you, Turner. Hello, I'm Turner Page. Moses, the baby saved from the Nile River by a princess, has grown now. He was raised a prince. He grew up in a palace, but it seems he knew his heritage. He was born an Israelite. He was one of the very few people that the Pharaoh did not want to exist. And those who did exist, Pharaoh wanted as slaves, too tired from working to ever rise against him. There came a dark time in Moses' life. He kept seeing how the Israelites were treated by the men Pharaoh sent to oversee them and their work. Moses did not like how things were being done. One day, he stopped an Egyptian foreman who was killing an Israelite worker. After that, Moses ran away from his home in the palace. Moses ended up in the wilderness. He met a woman named Zipporah. They married, and Moses lived and worked for her father, Jethro. Moses cared for Jethro's flocks. From Prince, he had become a shepherd. It was while he was caring for the flocks that Moses had an encounter with Yahweh, with God. Moses was wandering, watching the sheep, when he noticed something strange. There seemed to be a bush on fire. But when he looked closer, the bush was on fire, but it was not actually burning up like it should. When he went closer to investigate, things got rather intense for Moses. Yahweh called to Moses out of the bush, called him by name. And when Moses came closer, Yahweh told Moses to take off his sandals because this was holy ground. When you have a meeting with God, it is always on holy ground. Yahweh told Moses he was to go back to Egypt, tell the Pharaoh to let Yahweh's people, the Israelites, go. Then Moses was to lead the people out of Egypt to a place that Yahweh would show him. It would be a wonderful place, a promised land with plenty to eat, drink, and space to live. The Israelites would not be slaves there. They'd have their own country. When Moses heard what Yahweh wanted him to do, he immediately said he couldn't do it. He said he didn't have what it takes to be a leader like that. Yahweh said Moses could do it because Yahweh would be with him. Moses continued to argue with God until finally he realized arguing with God doesn't work. Moses agreed to go back to Egypt and speak with Pharaoh and try to convince the Israelites it was time to leave. Today, my guest is none other than Moses himself. Thank you, Moses, for taking the time to speak with me today. You have quite the reputation in the scriptures because of what you did for your people. I'm hoping you can tell us a bit more about what really happened. About this burning bush, was it really on fire? Were you maybe just a little overheated and uh, seeing things? It was real. I didn't believe that I have seen it first. But when I get closer, I saw real flames surrounding the bush. It was the strangest thing I have ever seen. I haven't seen anything like it since. And then Yahweh spoke to you from this burning bush. Yes. A loud voice. I didn't recognize my name. Moses, Moses. It was frightening. I just stood there. I didn't know what was happening. I, I wanted to turn around. I, I wanted to run away, but I couldn't. I just couldn't look away. I couldn't move. When God calls, it kind of draws you in. 
Well, what happened next? When I took a small step forward, the voice came again and told me to take off my sandals. I wasn't sure who it was at first, but when the voice told me I was standing in holy ground, I knew for sure it had to be Yahweh. God was calling me from that bush. Why on earth would God be calling me? I'm just a man caring for his father and my sheep. What was it that caused God to call you that day? The voice of God told me I needed to go back to Egypt. That was something I had no intention of doing. I had left there for a good reason. And I wasn't going back. But God insisted. God wanted me to go and speak. Pharaoh about to talk to Pharaoh about the Israelites. God said it was time for the Israelites to have their own land. To stop being slaves in Egypt. I really did not see how I was qualified for this job. God wanted you to go to Pharaoh and get permission for all of the Israelites to leave Egypt. That's what God said. I told God I don't speak very well. I had a bit of a stutter back then. I told God I wouldn't even know what to say. I told God that the Israelites probably wouldn't listen to me any better than Pharaoh would. But God kept saying, no, it has to be you. And I will go with you and you will be able to do whatever it is me. And so you went? Just like that? I had one more thing I thought I might help that I couldn't help. I told God that there were sure people would ask me who sent me. I said I didn't even know God's name. Just saying it was God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Wouldn't be enough. I was raised by an Egyptian princess in the palace, after all. But God simply said to tell them that I am sent me. That seemed to be the end of the conversation, or at least as far as God was concerned. So you headed back to Egypt? Reluctantly I did. I went back and found my family, my brother Aaron and my sister Miriam. They were still there and I hoped that they would help me get the other Israelites to listen to what I had to say. Aaron is really good at public speaking, so I hoped he could help speak to Pharaoh for me. All this sounds very intense, maybe a little scary. How do you feel now, looking back on the burning bush and your decision to go back to Egypt? I know I did the right thing. I also came to know that God is faithful and keeps promises. God said I would not be alone in my work, and I wasn't. God was there, and I had lots of help from Aaron too. It still wasn't an easy job, but I felt better knowing God was with me. I know there's more to the story, but for now, thank you for talking with me, Moses. I'm always happy to talk about the fact that God is faithful and always with us. So now we know that baby Moses became leader Moses. But what of the people he was to lead? And what did Pharaoh have to say? Until next time, this is Sandy Rhodes for Investigation Exodus.